All right, everyone, I got a message from a friend of mine, and he was saying, hey, I saw the YouTube video. It looks really cool. I want to do this with you. What exactly are you doing? How do I join? Do I work out with you, et cetera? And I realized, ah, great point. I told you that I'm doing this, but I probably should explain what I'm actually doing and what you can do. So I'm gonna share with you what I shared with him. And in the process, I'm also gonna share my laws of lean. If you do this, you'll get in whatever shape you wanna get into. This is what it looks like to cut through the noise. And when you don't do this, this is when you see that weight trend go up and to the right. So this is my 80-20 of weight loss, the laws of lean. Before I do this, just a real quick thanks to those of you have, who have publicly said I'm gonna join you on this challenge. And for those of you that have been willing to put money down a bet against yourself, I used Healthy Wage to create a bet with myself that I'm gonna lose 10% of my body weight uh, within the next six months. And trust me when I say this is a bet that I will not lose. If you know you're gonna use this series as a form of accountability to lock it in, if you know that you can keep the focus and discipline to win whatever bet you set with yourself, then do it. And I've got a link in the description of this video. If you use that link, you'll actually add an additional $40 to your prize, or you can just go to chooseify.com slash healthy wage. But if you decide to take me up on the challenge, please let me know, leave it in the comments. I wanna know that you're doing this with me. It's, it's really cool. So we'll have fun with this together. And I mean, I can already see the difference. I'm, I'm approaching the end of my first month right now. And and the, the effects, the benefits are starting to manifest. I'm doing a photo day-by-day -day log, a photo log and it is crazy, like you can't, it's hard to tell the difference, you know, 24 hours later, but when you look at the difference between, you know, 24 hours plus 24 hours plus 24 hours, one week, two week, three weeks of this, you look back at where you were and you're like, holy crap, so I'm gonna roll that right now. And while I'm doing that, the laws of lean. So these are seven laws, and I'm including the bonus down at the bottom, an eighth law, but these seven laws, if you do them, you'll be in the best shape of your life. No ifs, ands, or buts. And these laws of lean, they don't, they don't care what name you use for the diet that you're following. They, they just, it's basically what every diet has in common when you actually sift through the noise and, and come up with a framework of what's driving the weight loss. So there might be hundreds, if not thousands of diets, and whether or not they're diets or fad diets, they have different names. Uh, I actually went and Googled a list of them and, and I just stopped after I got bored, but the Mediterranean diet, the Zone diet, the Atkins diet, the Paleo diet, the Raw Food diet, Nutrisystem, Whole30, Warrior diet, Keto diet, Vegan diet, Weight Watchers, the list goes on. I just stopped, like, we could keep going. You probably have 20 or 30 you can add to this. What do they actually have in common? Laws of lean, law number one, cut out processed food. No more brownies, no more ice cream, no more pizza, no more, nothing that has a shelf life of eight years. The Pop-Tarts, the Popsicle, it's gotta go. It's gotta get put up. When you're just cramming something full of sugar, the candy, it's gotta go, right? You can hold on to your sugar-free gum if you want. But the processed foods have to go. I'm gonna go further with all these. I'm gonna break them down into individual videos in the future, but this is the highlight reel, right? This is what I'm doing. Law number one, cut out processed food. Law number two, limit food after dinner or eliminate food after dinner. So another diet that I could have mentioned was intermittent fasting or just fasting in general. Uh, well, I'm not gonna label this diet as intermittent fasting. Uh, I do think there's something to be said for not always being full all the time and actually being okay with some level of even hunger cues. You know, in this country in America, we're blessed that hunger is kind of a choice for many of us, right? We, we could never go hungry, and that's, that's a great thing, but at the same point, that means that we're always just moving from one meal to the next, right? We now, and as soon as we feel any hunger pain, we immediately want to do something about it, and it drives us just to snack. What, if it, what would it look like to eat to live, not live to eat? So while there's a different bunch of different ways that you can take this, and there's different diets that explore this, like intermittent fasting, which has 16-hour fast, 18-hour fast, 24-hour fast, and beyond, my simple rule for this is just I stop eating after dinner. Dinner is my last meal of the day. Now I realize many of you have different schedules. Some of you work nights, night shifts, like there's a lot of variety out there. But for me, I have dinner at 6 p.m. That is my last meal of the evening. And then I will have breakfast at a normal time, but that's gonna approximate eating within an eight hour window, eight hours or less, and then having 16 hours of not eating, right? And most of that happening while I'm sleeping at night. And really, I just need to then contain my self-control in that window between six and 10. 
Now, I will say that sometimes in between 6 and 10 p.m., like, I, I do crave food. Okay? You know, 6 to 10 is like a trouble spot for many people. This is where we do a lot of our binge eating. This is where we typically have dessert or snack. And sometimes you will just want something as you're settling down for the evening. I try to limit this to tea. Unsweet tea specifically, we're not adding sugar to it, but that is kind of my way of if I'm, if I'm gonna have something interesting, let's have something that doesn't have calories uh, added into that. And so I don't, I don't give myself room to do healthy snacks or healthy alternatives. I'm really trying to preserve a calorie-free window between six and 10 uh, p.m. at night. And for me, what I can have if I really want something, and I usually do, is unsweet tea. Try all the flavors, all the flavors. Maybe if you're sensitive to caffeine though, you should consider decaf. And so we usually go with decaffeinated tea. Peach lemon, it's like disgustingly sweet. It is decaf, disgustingly sweet. Cranberry orange, eh, not so much. This one's kind of interesting. It's a turmeric lemon ginger. We're enjoying this one, Yerba Buena tea out of San Francisco. Herba mate, buy this by the pound. I don't know why, because now I have to drink a pound of it. Not a huge fan, but it's got a pretty good caffeine content. So during the day, it's pretty, it's great. Um, this one, this has been in my cabinet for a long time. More Herba Mate, I guess I just don't learn my lesson and I keep buying it. This one though, by Stash, called Christmas Eve. Amazing. I don't just wait for Christmas to buy this stuff. I try to get it year round. Uh, it, I don't know, I've tried to find something similar, but I think the sweet spot is it's got a little bit of peppermint, cinnamon, orange peel, not too much, not too little, just right. So this is our current go-to. I actually didn't realize I had any tea bags left, so probably gonna have some of this now. No. One thing to note, one extra advantage for those of you that have trouble getting up in the morning, if you get in this practice of going to bed on an empty stomach, uh, you will notice your energy levels in the morning are so much better than when you're you know, rest and digesting the ice cream from the night before. Ice cream pizza, you're gonna be sleeping in a comatose state until it's all gone. Go to bed on an empty stomach on a regular basis, you will find that you'll hop out of bed with much more energy. It's just a little extra benefit there. Law number three, increase your water intake. Note, I didn't say your fluid intake, I didn't say increase your diet 7-Up or your Gatorade intake or your vitamin water intake, I said increase your water intake, right? Our body over time starts to misconstrue thirst signals. You're thirsty, your body's telling you you're thirsty, but it misconstrues it for you're hungry. And so one of the keys here is not that we have more willpower, it's that we just don't crave as much. And one of the ways to do this is to increase your water intake. I set a floor of about a half gallon a day. And my goal is to get close to a gallon of water a day. And, th and there's so many additional benefits, but you know, at a selfish level, the more water you drink, the less likely you are to have hunger cravings throughout the day. And sometimes if you haven't had water because you decided that Diet 7-Up is an appropriate substitute for water, you know, it can take a while to start enjoying the taste again, uh, but you gotta start drinking more water. Law number four. Good, okay, okay. Cardio, look, if you want to get healthier, get in good shape, you've got to move your body. You cannot expect to sit in front of a computer at your day job for eight hours a day, come home, have dinner, and then sit in front of Netflix for the remaining two to three hours and be in the shape you wanna be in. So for me, cardio, the bar here is so low. It's so low. It just says six out of seven days a week. So basically every day of the week, right? You could go with seven out of seven. You need to do at least 30 minutes of cardio. Now cardio here, I'm trying to lower the bar. Cardio could just be you taking a walk around the block, you walking your dogs, you going with your family to the park, whatever. I'm, I'm literally, it just says, when your spouse asks you to go for a walk with the family, you say yes, you remember, okay, well I have to six out of seven days move my body, so I will do something. And you can do more than that, you can hop on a bike, hop on a row machine, but there's no, you don't need to get your heart rate to any particular level. This is just, this is just table stakes for life. If you wanna live a long life, you need to use your body in a physical manner. It doesn't need to be high levels of exertion, but you do, you do need to exert something just to prove to the rest of us that you have a pulse. Okay, now clearly you're like, well, that, that sounds pretty easy, right? Well, yes, and we're not gonna stop there. We're just saying that's table stakes for moving through your day, through your week. Hey, I just wanted to take a quick second and ask you if you're getting value. If this is an important part of your week, an important part of your life, if you're prioritizing your health, have you pressed subscribe yet? Just take a second, press subscribe, ring that bell, say, I wanna get a notification when you release the next video. I'm with you on this journey and lock it in.
No, yeah, do it. Do it now. Awesome. All right, back to the show. And law number five is workout. Three to four days a week, and really as many as five, but you know, three to five days a week, you should do some form of metabolic conditioning. Now, metabolic conditioning or Metcons, uh, if you if you have ever been to like a CrossFit class or an Orange Theory class, that, that's the term that they use. We're gonna scale that back to our purposes. Basically says, we should deserve our shower at the end of this, right? You should do something that moves the needle, whether that be tennis or lifting weights or a high intensity interval training workout or you know some sort of club sport that you play or some sort of yard work that's pretty you know intense, raking the leaves, mowing the yard, et cetera. We should do something that at the end of it, we're tired, right? And we need to go take a shower for everybody else's sake. That's the, that's, you need to bake that into your week like three to five times a week. Uh, so for me, I try to, I, for me, it's usually lifting weights right now. Season of life, I've got a gym in the garage. It looks like that. But obviously if I were to go to a CrossFit class, that would count. If my wife, if we went to go play tennis, at some point that was count as one of those. And my goal is to three to five times a week to have one of those on the list of things that we have done. Law number six, eat clean. Huh. All right, so obviously we said cut out the processed food, but what does that leave, right? Well, you can eat food, we just need to eat clean food. What does clean food mean? Well, there's gonna be some common patterns that we're gonna see. Clearly, it's gonna depend on your preferences. And I realize that maybe individuals are listening to this that are vegetarians and not vegetarians. There's overlap here. I'm not a vegetarian, so this is not gonna be tailored to vegetarians in particular, but if you are a vegetarian or a vegan, you have come up with strategies that will fulfill some of the guidelines that are mentioned. So you don't need to not do this if you're a vegan or vegetarian, but you will need to make substitutions that uh, will give you some of the requirements that we're gonna mention. So let's go through those. Foods as a whole could be broken down into one of three categories for the nutrients that they provide. They're, it's, a, it's a composition of proteins, carbs, and fats. Alcohols are another category, but it's effectively a toxin, so there's not a whole lot to talk about there. We're gonna talk about proteins first. Protein generally is our friend. We want to have a moderately high protein diet. We wanna have some amount of protein with each meal. For, for those of us that aren't a vegetarian or a vegan, this is primarily going to, our protein's probably gonna come from eggs, it's gonna come from chicken, steak, which could be ground beef or the steak that you might think of, fish. Uh, the occasional protein shake, you know, these, these are the traditional protein sources that I find, possibly milk or yogurt, that sort of thing. If you're a vegetarian, then you're aware of your protein substitutes. Uh, and, you know, for many individuals, maybe it's like hemp seed is one, uh, lentils are another, beans and rice can offer some sort of complementary proteins. There's substitutes available, but basically we want to consume some amount of protein with each meal. And protein not only helps us build muscle and maintain muscle, but it also is going to keep us fuller for longer. So they're an important part of pretty much any diet. I haven't found very many low protein diets, except for individuals with specific health conditions, and that's very, very rare. So for the vast majority of us, our diet is gonna be, is, is going to wanna have at least moderate levels of protein in it. Uh, I use the occasional protein shake as well. I might have a protein shake a day. I don't feel strongly that you need to have tons of protein, especially for us just trying to, you know, lose the weight and maintain our health in the process. But we do want to keep our protein level higher. Next, let's talk about carbohydrates. Carbohydrates, when we think of processed foods, we're primarily talking about carbohydrates, specifically sugars. We want to avoid, basically, when you think about carbohydrates, we want to eat foods that would be considered diabetic friendly, and meaning they keep our blood sugar levels pretty stable at, even as we're digesting and eating them. So when you know when you eat that Snickers bar and you get that little energy kick, the energy push from the sugar that's in it, that's great, but it comes with a crash, right? And it also usually we crave more. We want to avoid cravings. And so the carb sources that we're going to eat from are ones that don't cause cravings and make us fuller for longer while providing energy. And so. Short list here would be like oatmeal, rice, sweet potatoes, various types of fruit like bananas, blueberries, strawberries, that sort of thing. The list could go on, but the brunt of our carbohydrates are gonna come from clean carbohydrates. We do wanna avoid the excessively sugary ones and certainly the processed ones. Carbohydrates have another category that we think of as vegetables. They also contain some amount of carbs, but they're much higher in fiber and in water content. And basically those are unlimited. You can have unlimited vegetables, 
Um, but you know, if you have a cup here and there or two cups with a meal that you can just throw on as much as you want, vegetables like broccoli and Brussels sprouts and spinach, these are your best friends. The guideline here is just generally to eat more of them and prepare them in a way that tastes delicious. There's no real caps on what you can have, but generally most of us struggle to eat enough of our vegetables. And that leaves us with the last category and that is fats. Now fats have been demonized since the 1960s and basically been attributed to be the source of all of all of the obesity epidemic that we have inside the United States. It's completely unfair and the science as we do more and more of it increasingly shows that that's a load of crap. Literally the worst part about fat is, is the name fat. I mean, you could call it high octane energy, brain fuel, I mean, you can name it anything else, and maybe we would love it, but it has the worst name imaginable. And practically, what do I mean for this? Clearly, not all fats are made equal. Fried foods are still bad for you. They just are. Your body takes canola oil and vegetable oil, which is what the vast majority of fried foods and fast foods are fried in, and it turns it into literally poison for your body. Uh, and so when you hear people talk about transhydrogenated fats, these are ones that because of high heat, they've turned into something that your body just doesn't know what to do with. You should avoid these at all costs. Having said that, what we've done in our grocery stores is we've just tried to make everything low fat. You see low fat on every product. Every single product you find in the store, whole fat yogurt, low fat yogurt. Regular cookies, low fat cookies. Whatever it is, there's a low fat alternative in the store. And if low fat worked the way it was marketed, America would all be in the best shape ever. And that's just not the case. Low fat is not your friend. Basically what happens here is you're taking the fat out. Great, okay, fine. Whether or not that fat was actually bad for you in that particular case or not, we could talk about later, but you're taking that fat out. You're adding a bunch of gums and binders and that sort of things to maintain the volume. And then to make up for what they're pulling out, they just add extra sugar. And this, as we just talked about, is the worst thing for you. So when you go look at a product that's low fat, you're gonna see there's gonna be way more chemicals or ingredients, right, on that same product. And then the sugar content or the carb content is gonna be way higher because they wanna make sure they're keeping that flavor. And so you just gotta be really careful and very rarely do I find myself actively going to the store and, trying, and saying, yes, I found low fat cookies, I found low fat yogurt, no. You know, I, I would look, instead I would look for a yogurt that says less sugar added or something along those lines, right? Uh, we, we don't wanna get in the habit of thinking that low fat is our friend. So we're not afraid of fats, but we do try to limit the fats to ones that are healthy or good for us, that our body knows what to do with. So uh, just a quick list that I use is, I'm fine with butter. I happen to get the Kerrygold butter. I, it's an Irish cream butter, it's very good. It's great ingredients. That just happens to be the one that I use, but I'm not afraid of butter. Uh, olive oil is my preferred oil of choice. You will never see vegetable oil, peanut oil, or canola oil in my house. And as I've gotten older, I've gotten more and more hardcore about that. Uh, other oils that are really good are avocado oil and macadamia oil. These get progressively more expensive. And so I use macadamia oil. We can't, we can't afford a whole lot of that in my house. So we usually will do most of our cooking with butter. Uh, olive oil and avocado oil. Coconut oil is another one. Ghee is another one. You see that in a lot of keto diets. You know, it just kind of depends on what you enjoy from a taste perspective. I have the best luck with avocado oil, butter, and olive oil. That tends to be what we use the most of. You can also get fats from nuts. So my family keeps huge bags of nuts in, in the cabinet from, from Costco or Sam's Club or, or Wegmans, wherever. But it's, it's a large bulk bags of almonds, pecans, walnuts. We sprinkle these, have them as a snack periodically. These are fantastic for you. Fat is a energy dense food group. So these are fine to have. And again, the key here is just moderation. What you'll find though, is that fats typically, especially pure fats without extra sugar added to them, they do fill you up faster. So as long as you're looking at those earlier rules, you're staying hydrated, you're having a small portion size, it'll give you great energy, it'll keep you full, and it'll be fantastic for your metabolism and your energy levels. It's all good stuff here. That was rule number six, eat clean. Rule number seven is, especially for those of us that have our game face on, right? We're pursuing a transformation is we have to avoid the snowball. There's so many quote unquote healthy alternatives out there. There's so many things that you can do just to replace your sweet tooth with something else. And while I think in theory, that's completely fine. You know, a healthy snack or sweet is, is much better than your go-to dirty snack, right? The problem is, you're actually giving license or permission to your, to your sweet tooth to continue to live. And right now we need that sweet tooth to die. 
right? We need that to go away and not be part of it. And here's why, not because that snack is gonna mess you up, but if you're always thinking about sweets, if you're always thinking about that next cheat day, it's gonna be very hard to stay the course. And what we simply cannot afford is for you to have the healthy snack that has a, you know, a little bit of sweetness to it. It's kind of getting, it's like a, it's a, it's a healthy chocolate chip cookie dough as opposed to your normal one. It's made out of chickpeas instead of your normal one, right? But then that just has you thinking about food all over the weekend and slowly you find yourself making work, worse and worse choices. You look up on Sunday and you brought back out the pizza, you had a bender and you realized, crap, right? And now, now game face, it's back to Monday, we're gonna get started again, but it's, you know, you just know when you step on the scale, you're gonna be five or six pounds heavier. It's gonna take you two weeks just to get back to where you were on Friday night before you started the snowball. And then from there, now you're making progress again. That's devastating. It's devastating for your morale. It's devastating for your momentum. And it increases the chances that you're gonna fall off the wagon. So we just, we're not doing cheat days. We're not doing cheat days. We can worry about how to slowly ease our way back into some sort of maintenance phase where we have the good stuff of life. But right now, we're focusing on our mental game to crush this, right? And so we need to figure out how to stay the course and avoid the snowball. And certainly if you have a healthy snack, you haven't lost, right? But the key is you can't afford to snowball. You simply can't do it. We cannot lose two weeks because we thought we, you know, we're here, everybody has a pizza, someone offered me a beer, and it just, it, it becomes this whole epic crash and burn on our diet. We gotta stay the course, avoid the snowball. That's rule number seven. Don't let anything slow you down. Now, here's my bonus rule for you. Everything I just laid out, like look at this chart, look at this chart. This is, this is from June 2019 to basically right here in mid-April when I started this. And look at that trend. It's pretty predictable, right? I was doing the opposite of the laws of lean, opposite. Now look right here at the top, you see that? And you see how it basically starts going right back down? That's as soon as I implemented the laws of lean, you can see where this is headed. And as long as I keep doing this, I'll get where I wanna go. So how do you keep it interesting, right? Cause you wake up each day, it's a new day. And you're like, oh, I'm 16 days in. How much longer do I have to do this? You've got to gamify it. And that's what I'm doing. So if you go to chooseavi.com slash healthy wage, you can join me on my challenge. I made a bet with myself. But if you're gonna make this bet, you can't afford to lose it. Who do you wanna be on the end of this? If you decide to make the bet, it's because you're promising me and you're promising yourself, I'm gonna stay the course until I get where I wanna go. Whatever bet I set with healthy wage, I'm not gonna lose. I'm taking their money at the end of this thing, right? So if you decide you're gonna lose 10% over three months, 10% of your body weight over three to six months, make sure you do whatever it takes to lose that weight and do it in a healthy and responsible way. Now, if you decide to do that uh, and you use my referral link, I'm gonna add $40 to your prize. So if you make a $100 bet with yourself, you're gonna have $140 as long as you win, as long as you lose the weight, You'll have a, it'll be $140 waiting for you, right? This is kind of the key, keep it interesting. Tell everybody, make it embarrassing if you fail. Create walls around your goals for yourself that like there's no way you'll crash out. Let everybody know. And then make it a game where every day you wake up and you're like, all right, I'm in the game. I am in the game. That's what I'm doing right now. That's exactly what I'm doing here. You know how embarrassing it'll be if I, if I stop doing this halfway through or I stop telling you about it? You'll know. Like, oh, where'd he go? He must've given up. It's not gonna happen. This money is already mine. And because I pushed out the bet till November, <laughs> the key here is in order to win this bet, I have to hit my goal, right? Which means if I hit my goal, that means six months from now, I've still kept off 10% body weight. So how do you do this? How do you gamify this? We so get started, you take action, you let everybody know your goals, and then most importantly, you follow the laws of lean. And we'll see you in the next video. Law number four. Law number four. Law number four. Four. Law number four. Law number four. Law number four.